Over the last two decades, China has been rapidly monopolizing every aspect of world trade. From buying out the world's ports in nearly every country on the planet, to being the supplier of nearly 30% of the world's goods, China has made itself the king of every aspect of trade. Well, that is except for one aspect of world trade, and that is shipping. You see, despite investing hundreds of billions of dollars into the shipping industry, China is still behind two much smaller nations in regards to its shipping power. Japan by most metrics is the second most powerful shipping nation in the world, while having a population that is 91% smaller than that of third place China. But Japan's high ranking in the shipping industry kind of makes sense, because throughout popular culture, Japan is kind of known as the top shipbuilding nation in the world, and has been for the past 100 years. However, the true shipping superpower of the world is actually the small Mediterranean nation of Greece. You see, Greece has a population of just 10 million people. That's about half the population of the state of New York, or about 30% less than the population of the Los Angeles metropolitan area. And yet, despite having this small population that is 140 times smaller than China, Greece has been the world's shipping superpower for much of the past 50 years. Meaning that if your country imports bulk resources like oil, metals, coal, or grain, or if you have simply bought out an item from overseas, then you most likely have relied upon a Greek ship at some point in recent memory. But this brings up the question, how did such a small country become the dominant player in one of the world's largest industries? And what does this mean for you, the economy, and the world's superpowers going forward? Well, if you were to take a look at a map of Greece, you would see some of the key reasons why Greece has been such a big player in the world's shipping industry over the last 2,000 years. First of all, 80% of Greece is covered in mountains, and even though there are some benefits to having a mountainous country, one of the downsides is that it is tough to grow large quantities of food in mountainous regions. So, throughout history, Greeks have turned to the sea in order to get fish, and turned to maritime trade in order to get food like wheat and resources like gold. Secondly, Greece is a nation with over 5,000 islands and hundreds of which are populated, meaning that having an up-to-date shipping industry was vital for the population centers on these islands. And lastly, Greece is in a unique geographical position in the world. It is close to the Suez Canal, which is one of the most important trade routes in the world, and it also has a short land connection to some of the wealthiest European nations in the world. Meaning that Greece has been destined to be a maritime and trading nation ever since it made its geographical boundaries. However, in modern times, it wasn't until about 80 years ago that Greece would truly begin to take over the world's shipping industry. You see, in the early 1900s, Greece was a top 10 shipping nation in the world, but it was far behind the most powerful countries like Great Britain, the United States, and Germany. But after the Greek Navy played a key role in helping the Allies win World War II, several Greek businessmen thought of an idea. What if they invested heavily in the shipyards of nations that needed to rebuild from the war? And some Greek businessmen like Aristotle Onassis took action with that idea. So for example, Aristotle Onassis in 1949 invested in West German shipyards and placed 36 large ship orders during the next several years. He also invested heavily into Japanese and other Southeast Asian countries as well, and then eventually he began buying up ships that were being sold off by the United States military after World War II ended. And because of these three factors, Aristotle Onassis would go on to become the largest private shipping fleet owner in the world. And he wasn't the only Greek that had this strategy. Other Greek businessmen like Stavros Niarchos ended up doing the exact same thing. And that is why by the 1960s, about a dozen Greek ship owners had the largest shipping fleet in the world. And these ship owners soon became known as the Golden Greeks. And here are three insane things that I loved about this story. One of which was that at many points throughout the 20th century, the Golden Greek businessmen had a larger shipping fleet than the rest of the European Union combined. The second crazy thing is this. Remember how Japan was the most powerful shipbuilding nation in the world for most of the 20th century? Well, even though that's true, it turns out that there were many years where the majority of ships that were being built in Japanese shipyards were actually solely for the Golden Greek fleet. And lastly, this next point would end up becoming extremely important to the world today. You see, as globalization expanded in the 1970s, Greek ship owners were relied upon to deliver resources like oil, coal, and food from country to country. But there was one country that was not yet ready to trade with the rest of the world, and that was China. 
But then, as China shifted their economic policy away from communism, they began taking on some small amounts of foreign investment. And of course, Greek ship owners were able to eventually expand into China while getting large contracts to deliver resources to and from China. So in a sense, Greek investment into the shipping industry in China helped facilitate China's growth as a modern day trading superpower. However, the tables would eventually turn between the two countries. You see, in 2008, the global financial crisis made economies around the world collapse. And arguably the hardest hit economy was that of Greece. So while most countries recovered from the financial crisis by around the year 2012, Greece never fully recovered. In fact, it wasn't until 2018 that Greece finally had a positive but small GDP growth of just 2%. And because of this economic downturn, the Greek government was forced to take some drastic actions in order to prevent the country's economy from spiraling out of control. So, Greece began looking for investors to pump money into the Greek economy. But the trouble was that because the country was going through a debt crisis at the time, nearly every country in the world refused to take the risk of investing into Greece. Well, that was, except for one country. And that one country was a nation that Greek ship owners invested in just a few decades earlier and helped turn that nation from a poor farming nation into an industrial powerhouse. And that country is China. You see, the ties that Greece and China have built over the last several decades due to Greek shipping investments in China had led to China returning the favor by investing back into Greece during the Greek debt crisis. In fact, Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Dendias put it best when he said, China came and invested in Greece when others stayed away. And so that is why Greece sold a 67% stake and control of the 2,000-year-old port of Piraeus to Costco. And not that Costco, but the China Ocean Shipping Company, which is a Chinese state-owned company. And why this is so important is because the port of Piraeus is viewed by many to this day as the pearl of the Mediterranean. Essentially, this port acts as a distribution hub for a network that spans across Europe, Asia, and Africa. And now, this distribution hub that is located in Europe is now controlled by the government of China. And this is just part of China's plan to take over the world's trade routes and ports. And if you want to know more about that, I've already made a video on that, which you can check out on my channel. But China's plan for the port of Piraeus is quite simple. It wants to make this port the largest port in Europe. And so far, they're on their way to doing that. You see, before China began the takeover of the port in 2009, the port of Piraeus was just the 14th largest port in Europe. It was also underperforming, and the port was at risk of laying off most of its workforce. But after a billions of dollars worth of investments from Costco, it has now climbed its way to the fourth largest port in Europe and has grown by more than 250% since the initial investments came in 2009. And they did this while not laying off any workers during the crisis. Now, even though this seems like a purely positive investment from China, the purchase was definitely met with some criticism as well. Now, obviously, there's the question of Chinese political and economic influence in Europe and how essentially Greece sold off land to a foreign country. But also, there's been a substantial wage reduction at the port. Now, that's partially from Costco and partially due to the public sector wage reduction in Greece that occurred before Costco gained full control over the port. But regardless, we are currently seeing a duality where Greek ship owners are dominating the world's shipping industry, yet Greece itself is struggling in selling off part of its domestic shipping industry. But it's also important to note that Greek ship owners may not dominate the world's shipping industry for much longer anyways. For example, Japan in recent years by some metrics has actually been ahead of Greek shipping, depending on what valuation you go by. And also, if China continues to invest into their shipping industry, it would only be a matter of time before the country of 1.4 billion people invest enough money to surpass a few dozen Greek ship owners and therefore become the top shipping nation in the world. And another bad sign for Greek ship owners is this. The Greeks are by far the biggest shipper of oil in the world. In fact, about one third of the world's oil is delivered with Greek ships, and about one third of the Greeks' shipping value comes from these oil contracts. But because oil is in a little bit of a predicament right now if you haven't heard, the Greek ship owners are likely to fall behind the likes of Japan and China who are focused a lot more on container shipping, which is for smaller products. And obviously, container shipping has grown a ton over the last several years with the extreme growth of e-commerce. 
All this means is that Greek ship owners will have to adapt to the oil crisis that we are going through today, or they will be forced to concede their spot as the top ship owning nation of the world. Now, if that were to happen, this would also mean that China would become the world's dominant player in nearly every part of world trade. They already control the world's manufacturing and ports. They also have a hand in large corporations around the world and consumers around the world as well. And if they control the shipping industry, then the only two things that would prevent them from owning the entire entire consumerism of the global market are these things. The domestic courier services like the United States Postal Service and Canada Post are one step of the process which China does not own any interest in. However, there have been talks about privatizing these two government-owned companies. And even if these talks to privatize the mail services are trivial, it would be a scary thing if a Chinese state-run company had partial ownership of the company that delivers packages to your home address. So when you think about it, if you buy an item online, the entire process of getting that item from the factory floor to your front door could soon mostly be done by Chinese state-run companies. But there is one step that kind of gets in their way, and that is usually the very first step in this process, which is Amazon. When you kind of think about it, Jeff Bezos is really the only thing standing in the way of China having a complete dominance over the global e-commerce space. I mean, the second and third largest e-commerce companies in the world are actually JD and Alibaba, both of which are Chinese companies. And if they were to one day surpass Amazon, and China is to surpass the Greek ship owners and take over the world's shipping industry, we could see the biggest monopoly of an entire global market that the world has ever seen. And so I'd like to know what you guys think about all this. What do you think about the Greek shipping industry? And what do you think about China's plan to try and buy out the world's global trading economy? Let me know in the comments down below. And please hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you want to see my next video like this, which should be out in the next few days. And lastly, please leave a like and check out my documentaries playlist as I have a ton of other videos just like this on there. So make sure to click on that and I will see you guys in just a few seconds in my next video.